The Tarrant County Master Gardener Association has partnered with the Tarrant Regional Water District to encourage water conservation. TRWD maintains four area lakes and pipelines needed to provide surface water to local water treatment plants so they can clean that water to meet drinking standards for our communities. They also work with many cities in Tarrant County, such as Fort Worth, Arlington, Mansfield, and many others to provide water conservation programs to the community. Conservation is an important water supply strategy to help meet the needs of our growing population. There are currently 2.3 million people living in Tarrant County, and this is expected to double over the next 50 years. At SaveTarrantWater.com, you can sign up for free weekly watering advice custom to your location. If you're a resident of Tarrant County, you can sign up for a free sprinklers checkup where a licensed irrigator comes to your home, provides a comprehensive evaluation of your system with recommendations to reduce water waste. There's also an event calendar where you can find information about future classes and workshops. So be sure and check out SaveTarrantWater.com to sign up for their free services. Hi, I'm Rita Honnell. Tonight we're going to talk about herbs, all about herbs. So how is your herb garden growing? What is an herb? Well, herbs can be found in all major plant types. They can be in the annuals, perennials, shrubs, and trees. So the definition of an herb might be a plant or a plant that part valued for its medicinal, savory, or its aromatic qualities. A broad definition might be any plant that has a use other than being strictly ornamental. It might be used for flavor. It might be used for fragrance or it might be used for nectar or it might have medicinal properties. Many of these overlap. So is it herb or is it herb? Well, I meant to say herb, but I usually say herb. The H is generally not pronounced by most Americans, but either is correct. So why do we grow herbs? We grow herbs to add flavor to our food. We grow herbs to add uh, medicinal, for their medicinal uses. And we grow herbs to attract butterflies to our gardens. Yes, there are many herbs that, that uh, butterflies love, both for the nectar and for the host plants. And we use them to add attractive plants to our landscapes. So attracting butterflies with nectar plants and with host plants. So what is the difference? Well, a nectar plant is a plant that a butterfly gets its food source from. In this case, it's Greg's mist. If you haven't grown Greg's mist in your butterfly garden, you're missing out because they will flock to it. Some other butterfly nectar herbs might be salvia gregi, chives when they're in bloom, basil, blue salvia, or any of the most any of the salvias, Mexican mint marigold, Mexican oregano, and Mexican bush sage. There are many others. And here's what they might look like in the landscape. All of those were just, most of those mentioned are in this picture. The, the blue at the top is Mexican bush sage. The yellow in bloom in the fall is Mexican mint marigold. And then the blue below that is the Greg's Mist, the pink Salvia Gregi, and the one in the foreground is Mexican Oregano. So herbs as host plants 
for butterflies might include parsley, dill, and fennel. Those three in particular are preferred by the swallowtails, particularly the black swallowtail. It will lay its eggs on these plants and use them as host plants to feed their uh, caterpillars. They spend about approximately 10 days in each stage of egg and the larva or the caterpillar. And then it makes a chrysalis and the chrysalis then forms the beautiful butterfly. Butterfly weed and milkweed are preferred by the monarch. So this is a black swallowtail caterpillar as it feeds on dill and it may strip the plant. So what do you do? I like to plant some for the uh, butterflies in the, my butterfly garden and in my culinary garden. And if you find some uh, feeding in your culinary garden, just simply take them off and move them to the butterfly garden. And then you'll have one for yourself and one to feed the butterflies or the caterpillars. And this is what it will become, a beautiful jewel in your garden. So for culinary purposes, well, what would pizza be without basil? And oregano for that matter. And this is potatoes with dill. Dill pairs well with potatoes, also with cucumbers. But you want to use them in the last stages really not cooking the, the dill. It doesn't like the heat. Most of your culinary herbs like to be added at the end. There are some exceptions. Some would be bay leaf, should be cooked. And of course you remove it before you serve it because it, the leaf itself is not edible, but it does add a nice flavor to soups and other dishes. So some culinary herbs might include basil, dill, fennel, parsley, oregano, chives, thyme, Mexican mint marigold, sage, and lemongrass. Mexican mint marigold, the leaves of it can be used in place of tarragon. It's often called Texas tarragon because it grows quite well in Texas where uh, regular tarragon is a little bit more finicky. Lemongrass is a nice grassy addition to your garden. It is an annual. It may come back in our milder winters. This past winter was an exception. It did not come back in our garden at least. So uh, some other culinary herbs, parsley, the flat leaf gives the best flavor, but both the flat leaf and the curly leaf can be used. So herbs make us feel better. They have medicinal qualities. Sage is known as a memory enhancer. I can use some of that. Basil has any anti bacterial properties. Cilantro, known for its anti-inflammatory properties. And you either like it or you don't. There's really not usually any in between. Medicinal herbs might include, again, basil as a mosquito repellent and it's antibacterial, fennel to aid digestion, rosemary stimulates circulation, mint aids digestion also, lemon balm is an antiviral, and thyme 
strengthens the immune system. So why not add these to our daily diets to improve our health? Medicinal and cosmetic herbs might include aloe vera. You'll find it often used in, in uh, cosmetics. Calendula. It's not really well known around here, but it's a beautiful herb with golden yellow flowers and it's often used in cosmetics. It can also be used for culinary purposes. Often the, the uh, petals of the flowers are used in, in, uh, uh, cul for culinary purposes. Chamomile, good for allergies and colds and so forth. And echinacea is the same. Lavender is good for the uh, mind. It helps us to relax. And turmeric is supposed to be an, uh, very good for the uh, anti-cancer uh, and other things. So herbs in the landscape. Well, many herbs are very beautiful and can be incorporated into the landscape. This is the Mexican bush sage, and it gets about four feet tall, has beautiful purple blooms in the summer, late summer. So designing your herb garden. Well, perhaps you just want to add a few herbs to your flower garden or your vegetable garden. Just know what you're eating because not all plants are edible. And not all herbs are edible. So choose the type of herb garden that you wish to, to have. Will it be for culinary purposes or butterflies or both? Decide on your location. It should be a location that has good drainage they don't generally like wet feet. And it gets at least six hours of sun each day. There are some herbs that like shade, but for the most part, they do well in the full sun. Raised beds are best for drainage. And it is a must. But consider your space. Design your herb garden to fit your space. So it might be a walk path where you can walk through it and access it from all sides. Remember to consider the height of the plants, the taller ones at the back and the smaller ones near the walkway. It's wonderful to have this as you walk through and brush up against the herbs and they give off their wonderful fragrances. It might be an oval shape. Maybe you've got a space in the center of your yard that you would create an oval garden. Well, this is what it might look like. Easy to access give some dimension to your yard or your garden. It can be a lovely asset. It might be the corner of your little square backyard. Or it might be a whole big square section with walkways in two directions and access all around each side. Or if you're really creative, you might consider something like this. Isn't that beautiful? No, it's not mine. This is a, our herb garden at our community garden where I'm the lead. And this was a few years ago. It has developed since then. And one of the problems that we had was drainage in the center of the garden. 
in that center round bed. And so um, we raised it and terraced it. And it became a beautiful, functional asset to the garden. Don't forget about water. Be sure you have access to water. Easy to water your plants with uh, water nearby and or consider drip irrigation. Here's some other plants that are beautiful in the landscape. On the left is Echinacea. This is beautiful in a, as a landscape herb and it's also a medicinal herb. And it also attracts butterflies. Multifunctional. St. John's wort is a medicinal herb, but it makes a beautiful plant in the garden. It's perennial. Sage. Well, it, it blooms. It attracts butterflies when it's in bloom. It is a um, wonderful plant to use with sage. Uh, I'm sorry, to use sage with things such as uh, uh, squash. Or what would Thanksgiving be without sage in our turkey and dressing? On the right is Walker's Cat Mint. Again, Greg's Mist attracting the butterflies and the echinacea also attracting the butterflies to the garden. So this is our uh, raised terrace bed as it was completed. Consider container gardening for your herbs. Most of them do very well in containers. Pots provide easy access. I like to have mine out on the patio and easy access to the kitchen. So I can just go out and snip a few when I'm preparing dinner or lunch or dinner and add it to whatever it is that I'm cooking for that meal. No soil prep is needed. You can use ordinary potting soil. In most for most herbs sometimes you need to add some amendments but it depends on the individual type of herb and uh, enjoy your patio herbs Cuban oregano is one that does very well in a pot but it is cold sensitive so you will need to bring it inside and in, when it gets cold but it makes a wonderful house plant So herbs by season, cool season herbs might be dill, parsley, fennel, and cilantro. So you would not want to plant those probably now, although it is still cool, it's, we're about to go into our warm season and they will generally bolt and not do well once the weather turns warm, especially parsley and cilantro. Dill is uh, best planted in early fall or spring. It adds a fine texture to your landscape. And you can enjoy it several months out of the year. It just doesn't like the really hot months in July and August. And again, it is a host plant for the black swallowtail butterfly. Parsley is a good companion plant to deal. You can plant it too in the spring or in the fall. Use the flat leaf parsley for the best flavor for culinary purposes and the curly leaf for ornamental. In other words, to uh, make it look pretty, make your dish look pretty. <coughs> parsley growing in a pot. It grows quite easily in a pot or in the ground. Fennel. It can be grown year round, but it needs some protection from the very hot sun in the summer. It's best not to plant it too near dill. 
And sometimes they're kind of hard to tell the dill and the fennel apart, especially when they're small. The easiest way, look at the base of it. If it looks like your fingers spread out on your hand, like this, then it's fennel. If, the, uh, if it kind of comes out from all directions, it would be dill. Easy way to tell them apart. So some herbs for all seasons, meaning they're pretty much evergreen, would be rosemary, onion chives, garlic chives, marjoram, and oregano, sage, and thyme. Remember, there are many varieties. On rosemary, look to see how big it gets because there's, there's very um, small ones as well as very tall rosemaries. So by the size, mature size, you want it to be Thyme does really well in a, in a pot, and it also does well in the garden. There's many varieties of thyme, such as lemon thyme, which is my favorite for culinary purposes, but there are many different types, and they have different flavors. So try them. Try them all. Garlic chives on the left is um, pretty much an evergreen. It dies back some in the really harsh winter. It has a flat leaf as opposed to onion chives that has a tubular leaf. And the, in this picture is French onion chives, which is a larger variety. And then there's several other varieties. The bay tree. It can be grown in a pot until it gets so big. It is sensitive to freeze, so growing it in a, in a pot is a good way to protect it. But after a few years, mine got so large, I planted it in the garden. And it grew quite large and was a beautiful evergreen asset to the garden. However, this past winter, I don't know if it's survived or not. I haven't declared it dead yet, but it's not looking too good. Most of the time, they're good to about uh, the mid-teens in temperature. Some warm season plants, which is what we need to consider now. What can you plant in your garden now? Well, Mexican mint marigold is a perennial. And as I said before, it can be used in place of tarragon for culinary purposes. It blooms in the fall with these beautiful yellow blooms about the same time that uh, your chrysanthemums bloom. And lemon balm, it is also a perennial and uh, it dies to the ground in the winter and comes back each year. Both of these come back pretty faithfully where you plant them, but they can seed and spread. Just uh, take care of the little seedlings when they're small and they won't be a problem to you. Lemon verbena has the strongest of the lemon flavors. It is a tender perennial. Lavender, um, a lot of people say they can't grow lavender. The real tricks to growing lavender is it needs really good drainage. It does not like wet feet. Water it from the ground, not uh, getting the leaves wet. Don't use your sprinkler on it. And too much rain may be um, not, not very good for it. But it is a beautiful accent in the garden with its beautiful lavender flowers. It has some culinary purposes. It attracts butterflies and it's beautiful in the landscape. And it is said to be a, have a calming effect, the fragrance of it. 
echinacea is also attractive in the landscape. It attracts butterflies and it has some medicinal properties. Mexican oregano. This is a, another beautiful kind of semi evergreen and it has the little tubular purple flowers, lavender flowers actually in the summertime. And it'll bloom for months. It is a small shrub. Basil. Ah, oh, what would be the summer garden without basil? Remember, it doesn't like it cold. It doesn't do well if it gets into the 40s in temperature. And the hotter it gets, the better it does. So consider many types of basil. This is sweet basil. There's many types of uh, basil that has different flavors. And Thai basil adds a nice purple bloom that attracts butterflies. Generally, you want if you want to use it for the leaves, you'll want to keep the blooms pinched off. But if you're using it to attract butterflies and bees, then let it flower. And it does quite well in a pot. And that's your purple basil in a pot. Greek oregano makes a good ground cover. And this is Vietnamese coriander which is quite fragrant, does well in a pot or in the ground. So herbs add zest to our food. We didn't talk about the mint. Um, it likes it moist and some protection from the hot sun. But be careful because it will spread. Herbs bring butterflies to our garden. So what will be the purpose of your garden? Will it be for culinary purposes, for medicinal purposes, or attracting butterflies? How will you design your herb garden? You want to consider the location for good drainage, the uh, sun, how much sun a day it gets, shade, your water source, what material will you use to build your bed and be sure that uh, you try to make a raised bed. Choose your design. Think of what the herbs will look like in your landscape. They can be beautiful additions and add nice color to your garden. And be aware of surprises when selecting your plants. Be very mindful of the size that they will be when they're mature. This Oha Santa or root beer plant is a beautiful little plant that we put in the garden a few years ago. The leaves smell like root beer when they're uh, crushed. And it's used a lot like banana leaves to wrap food in when cooking. Has some other purposes also. And it was just a nice little beautiful plant until we had to cut a had to have a tree removed that was providing shade. And once the sun hit it, it went out of control. It grew as tall as the building and spread throughout the bed and was a nightmare to get out of the garden. So select your space for sun exposure. 
check for good drainage, design your herb garden, prepare the soil, and then select the plants that you want to go in it. But of course you might want to think about that prior to doing all of that so that you know what the finished product will look like. Or just use pots. That's an excellent way to have your fresh herbs. And, you know, it sometimes turns out to be a bit of a train wreck, but that's okay if that's what you want. So enjoy your herbs and happy gardening. Herb Garden of the Tarrant County Master Gardeners. I'm Rita Hoddle. I've been a Master Gardener since 2000 and my partner is Carol Vance and uh, I joined Rita in the Herb Garden right after my intern year in 2011. I've been working here ever since and it's just a joy to come out here and uh, be a part of this we started the herb garden in, I think it was about 2009, and I was asked if I would uh, put in an herb garden. Uh, we were just starting the community garden here, the, the demonstration of the community garden here, and it was in its earliest stages. Uh, we soon learned that we had no topsoil, so we really had to build it from the ground up. So. Uh, we came in with uh, newspapers, thick newspapers to cover the scruffy grass. On top of that went soil and compost and finally mulch. And uh, we've done little else to it since then as far as, as fertilizing. Um, a couple of times we've maybe added some worm castings. Not much else has been done to it, and you can see the garden is, uh, or you will see, the garden is uh, thriving quite well. It's done very nicely this year with falling rain, especially. Um, so that was the beginning of the herb garden, and uh, I designed it. I wanted it to have uh, access all around where people could walk through and see the herbs and smell the herbs and even pinch off some and taste it if they wanted to. But uh, I wanted it to be where it could be enjoyed. One of the things that we did early on was kind of section off the garden into different parts and, and we called, um, we have the culinary herbs which is the major part of the garden and uh, then we have what we classified as silver herbs, things that have silvery leaves, gray leaves, and uh, we'll find that in this section right behind us. Um, they often cross over uh, one to the other. Then the section, uh, another section is the butterfly herbs, and uh, we grow them to for pollination and for uh, the host plants for some of the butterflies. Then uh, at the back of the garden, we have uh, a section of the medicinal herbs. The design of the garden has evolved over time uh, as we've added drip irrigation to the entire demonstration garden. That has presented challenge, challenges for our herbs because they have a low tolerance for a lot of water. They need a lot of drainage and we happen to be the low point in the garden. So we have dealt with that. Um, we had a shade tree which died, so uh, through the generosity of our Master Gardener Association, we've added a pergola this spring to help us uh, have a little shade, not only for our benefit, but also to show how some plants can grow in shade, and we're working on that now. I'm standing in the middle of the culinary herb section. This is one of the section of plants that we're most often asked about because people cook especially more now that they're home during the pandemic and working from home and probably will be so they have more time both for their gardens and for cooking uh, and these are uh, 
some of the herbs. Here we have the sage, culinary sage, rosemary, more rosemary. This is lemongrass, <laughs> which is used a lot in soups and Asian cooking. It uh, grows like a reed. It will come back if you don't cut it back in the wintertime. It will turn brown, and a lot of people don't like brown, but it really does add to the winter landscape as a uh, full, full effect. Uh, when spring comes and we have protected the base with the old growth, then uh, we cut it back and it comes out from the roots. Uh, we have one of my favorite herbs here, which is a Mexican mint marigold. It's used in Texas where we can't grow tarragon as successfully because of the heat. And, and this is a wonderful herb. Just standing here rubbing against it, I'm enjoying the uh, fragrance of it. We have um, lemon balm behind me, which I keep trying to call the lemon grass, but this lemon balm is a completely different animal. It reseeds vigorously and it's great if used in um, teas and cooking. You can even dice it up in your shortbread cookies. There are two kinds of herbs that we grow here. There are annuals, which means they live one year or biennials live two, such as parsley. And then there are perennials, which come back every year, either from the rootstock or from the ground. Uh, the ones that we've looked at so far in the garden have been perennials. In this section, we have parsley, which we have started from seed in our greenhouse. It's going to seed now, and we will harvest those seeds after uh, they're dried on the stem. We haven't had a chance to put basil up this year, but we have enough of it because it has dropped seeds. Throughout the growing season, we don't let it go to seed. We snip those flowers and seed heads off so it will produce more leaves for us. At the end of the season, we do let it go to seed and ta-da, we have more basil plants. The society garlic here, which is not a true garlic, but it is a perennial plant with use as a herb. great crop back there of chives, <clears throat> which come back every year. Thyme is a small trailing plant, and we have thyme all around our circle here. I'd like to mention a few more herbs that you can grow here in North Texas. We have uh, oregano, which is very successful and wonderful to use fresh in the garden. We have marjoram, and I mentioned the garlic chives over here. This is a plant that you might want to keep in a large container simply because it spreads so easily. We're asked about the difference between herbs and herbaceous plants. Not all herbs are herbaceous and not all herbaceous are herbs. A herbaceous plant refers to a plant that dies back to the ground in the winter and comes up from the roots. So many herbs do that and many other plants do. But a herbaceous plant is not necessarily what we consider to be a herb. Many of the plants we have here um, can grow year-round in Texas. We have the salvia gregii, which stays up and green through the winter, but we do cut it back or it gets too large. We have um, the Mexican oregano, which has a wonderful flavor, makes a wonderful bush, and can be used in culinary dishes. Back here, we have some more of the Mexican mint marigold. This time of year, it looks like a wonderful little bubble but it will grow. In the fall, it puts on uh, beautiful yellow flowers, which can be used in salads, but it also gets tall and leggy because that's just what it does. And uh, the tall stems will fall over. So if you plant this, do it outside, either in a giant pot or in the ground where you have a space around it, which is what you will see here. A little tree in the middle is a witch hazel. And if you know anything about witch hazel, that's a witch hazel tree. Behind me, we have a wonderful uh, array of echinaceous pink cone flowers. And we put these in <clears throat> a few years ago from small transplants and four inch pots that came from one of our other gardens. This is our circle garden in the center of the garden. And uh, in it, we have pine and some different varieties of thyme, but right now it's in bloom. One of my favorite times is the uh, lemon thyme or the lemon lime thyme to use for culinary purposes. Right now it's in bloom 
It's acting as a pollinator for the bees and, and the butterflies. And um, as you can see, it spills out over the side. Next to that in the front, we have calendula. Now it's really a winter plant. It likes our winter months. It doesn't like our hot months, so it's fading away. It'll be going to seed and it will reseed itself. It is used sometimes in the place of uh, saffron, the petals of the flowers, and adds a little flavor to a dish. And, and behind that, up on the top circle, is Kent's oregano. And it's more of an ornamental, but it is beautiful. It has little pink flowers on it. It's not blooming much right now, but it is a beautiful addition to your garden. A lot of people are surprised by this one. This is stevia. Yes, the same kind you buy in the little packets to sweeten your tea. Uh, you can use the plant leaves as a sweetener. They are extremely sweet. If you bite on one, it's almost too sweet to tolerate. We have some dill that over here that is still uh, hanging on, but it doesn't like the summer heat. We're leaving it as long as it will because the butterflies like it. The black swallowtail butterfly lays its eggs on dill, parsley, and fennel. And the little uh, caterpillars hatch out of the eggs and they start munching away on the plant that they have, uh, where they have been placed. And uh, they're very plant specific. So they will chew away, eat away, until they're um, as large as uh, your little finger about and then they will find a place to go and, and uh, become a chrysalis. After the chrysalis stage out comes a new adult butterfly and you can watch those beautiful things in growing in your garden, the little jewels that flutter around your garden. So provide the host plants for your uh, butterflies. This is what we refer to as our medicinal section of the garden. And we don't promote it for medicinal purposes. It's here for you to, to research. But I'll tell you what some of the plants are. Behind us with the little white bell is comfrey. And it has some medicinal uses. Lamb's ear was used by the early Americans and the, and the uh, American natives as band-aids little uh, other use for it was uh, they used it for their personal uh, hygiene because the leaves are very soft and uh, kids love to touch them and feel them if I grow it at home my granddaughters will just about strip it because they love to just play with the leaves they feel so nice and soft but it also has antiseptic qualities to it so it was used on wounds. Behind here we have bee balm or mercada, and uh, it has some uh, medicinal purposes also, which I won't go into. You can look them up if you would, please. And behind that is uh, St. John's Wort. I do know it's it's used as kind of an antidepressant. So a lot of the plants that we grow are researched and used in medicine, but if uh, we haven't researched it or we don't know what it's used, what they use it for, or if it's not something that's clinically recommended, we prefer not to uh, recommend those plants for medicinal uses. But we do like to have them for demonstration purposes. So you can see what they look like. They're very beautiful additions to the garden. And this is a bay that's used in soups and culinary uses. It's perennial. It grows really large. Once you get it established, it can get up to 30, 40 feet. So uh, containing it is a challenge and uh, pruning is an art. So we recommend that you put it in an area where you can allow it to grow. Um, sometimes it doesn't succeed the first time. It depends upon your soil, climate conditions, and if you buy it from a nursery, how it was packaged and shipped. So container grown is best. You can grow them through cuttings. 
you can use the leaves fresh off of the tree. I've asked that quite a lot. Do I have to dry it first? No. You buy them dried if you buy it out of the grocery store, but you don't have to dry it to use it. You can use the leaves fresh, clipped off the tree and thrown into a pot of soup or stew or uh, pot roast, whatever you're cooking. The leaves are not edible. They just add a flavor to your food. So they need to be removed before you serve your dish. Oh,